What's up guys, Tony here with Hitech Check, and today we're going to be taking a look at the WebU2 current and voltage meter USB tester for quick charge 4.0 and up and PD power delivery 3.0 and 2.0. Uh, this I got off banggood.com. I've been wanting one of these for quite some time because there have been some instances where I needed to know uh, what my voltage and amperage was being pulled from some of the chargers uh, that I have. Some of them don't have any information on them and this would come in, uh, come in handy. So this is um, the one of two that you can buy off Banggood. There's a cheaper one that has a case that's kind of uh, not as good as this one. It's maybe put together with some screws and stuff. This one has a nice um, aluminum case around it. It looks really nice. The screen is a, a TFT screen. I believe it's uh, 1.7 inches. If you take a look around here, it's got a female USB-A and a male USB-A on each end. If you look here, it's got two uh, USB type C's, one in and one out. There is also a micro USB for a temperature sensor that you can put on this. On the other side, it has a micro USB in for uh, powering this. So if you want to get a clean reading, you can use a micro USB to power it and then your other USBs are just going to be straight um, you know, voltage, amperage, and everything else. So you don't have to worry about not getting a clean reading. And then there's a couple buttons. There's an OK button and an M button. And those cycle through each uh, screen. So on this screen right here, it's showing voltage, amperage, and wattage. As you can see, it kind of dimmed. You can set that uh, to dim at a certain time if you, you know, if you want to just kind of uh, saves the screen. Now the first thing you're going to want to do uh, when you get this, if if you see uh, Chinese writing or anything like this, you're going to go ahead and before you plug it in, you're going to hold that M button and then we're going to plug it in. And that'll bring you to the setup screen and that's where I changed it from, you know, the Japanese or Chinese language that it was to English. So here we have all the um, different settings, the language and font, display brightness, standby brightness, that's what I was just telling you about, uh, standby time, USB HID port, serial port upload, lowest recorded current, background record, real-time curve, voltage reference, current reference, temperature correction. So if you see that your, you know, your sensor is off a little bit, you can kind of adjust it, the G sensor setting. So when you, you flip it, um, it flips everything over for you. Action recognition, auto wake up, MTK auto detection, clear all data and default settings. So I'll go ahead and unplug and don't hold the button in. We'll replug it back in and then we get back to our, our voltage setting. So right now the current USB that I have it plugged into is putting out five volts. There's no amperage or wattage because I don't have anything um, on the other side here pulling any current. So I'll go ahead and plug something in just so you can see what that looks like. So you can see immediately it starts uh, pulling current. So here is the wireless charger. So it's not it's not pulling too much. It's you know 0 0.016 amps. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll put something on the charger here. Have my Galaxy Buds, and we'll see immediately uh, the amperage start changing. So now it's it went from five volts to nine volts. The charger that I have is capable of doing uh, nine volts. So then when we take this off and it stops charging, the amperage immediately drops down. Okay, it's got this cool little uh, gyro sensor. So when you flip it upside down, it automatically changes the rotation of the screen, which is awesome. It also comes in this nice little tin. It's got some foam in here to keep it safe. And that's what you get from uh, Banggood. Okay, so if we want to go to the next screen, you just hit the... Uh, M button. 
Okay, so on this next screen here, it's going to display voltage, current direction of current flow, accumulated capacity, uh, energy, and temperature. And you can also store uh, each one of these in six different groups. If you hit the OK button, it uh, stops and starts the voltage collection. If you hold the OK button, it takes you to the next group. So you can always save your last uh, set of data. As you can see down here, it shows the temperature. And then if you hold in the M button, it rotates the screen. And this is nice because when you plug something in uh, and it's, its orientation is like this, the orientation might be actually flipped upside down and because it's plugged in, you can't unplug it because then it'll turn it off and then you flip it. Um, so it has the button here to automatically rotate it if you need to, to something else. And you can just cycle through the rotations for that. So on this next screen here, it's going to dis give you a display of the voltage, current, the direction of the current flow, power, equivalent internal resistance and temperature along with uh, minimum, maximum, and average values. Haven't figured out what that does, but um, it, it turns the LED on and off. So if you long press the M button, it resets your uh, all your averages. So again, your voltage, amperage, wattage, and resistance. So now on this screen, it gives you a display of the voltage and current, power, temperature, and protocols. Now you can long press the OK button to switch temperature readouts between um, Fahrenheit and Celsius. And then if you hit the M button, it brings you into the protocols menu. So what you want to do is hold it down till the pop-up comes up and then long press it again. Release, press again and hold, and it brings you into here. So these are all the different protocols uh, that you can go through. And you cycle through just hitting the M button. There's quite a few of them. <laughs> so what I like to do is the, the auto detection. So if you want to do auto, you just hold down on that M button. It enters, and it goes through all of the different protocols that your charger can do. So as you can see, it's capable of doing 5 volts, 2 amps for Samsung, um, BC 1.2, uh, DCP 5 volts, 1.5 amps, uh, quick charge, 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, uh, and then it's also capable of quick charge 3.0. And like I showed you before, it switched over to 9 volts because that's what was needed for my uh, Galaxy Buds to charge. So then you hold the OK button, you get out of here, and then to get out of this, just keep holding the OK button again, and you're back to here again. Okay, so the charger that's currently plugged in here is a Blitzwolf Quick Charge 3.0. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into a Samsung charger and let you see uh, what comes up with one of those. Okay, so here it is currently plugged in. We're going to go into the auto detection. I'll let you see what it shows there. So as you can see, it is a Samsung. Uh, it is capable of doing 5 volts, 2 amps um, for the quick charge. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. It's especially nice, like I said, if you have some sort of charger or something that doesn't have um, any voltage, amperage, or anything printed on it, this will definitely let you know what it's capable of. Or if it says it's capable of, capable of one thing, um, it may be capable of other things or compatible with. So that's a nice little feature to test it out. And then we go over to our next screen here. Now this screen is going to dis give you a display of the voltage, current, direction of current flow, internal and external temperatures. Uh, if you want to get external temperatures, you're going to need that little module that I showed, I told you about before uh, for the USB and plug it into there, and that'll give you the external temperatures. 
It also has the uh, accumulated capacity, energy, time on, time recorded, memory status, and current threshold along with the group number. So memories got 100%, your recording, current thresholds, your group. So then if you long hold the, the M button, it'll give you the uh, current temperature of the unit. And then if you press it again, it brings up the data groups and what's stored in them. And then long press again, and it brings you back to the main menu. If you hold OK, it resets the values. So now on this next screen, uh, you're going to need some sort of load to uh, get the resistance of the cable. First, what you need to do is you need to disconnect the UMP from the charger and then connect the cable in between the charger and the UMP, and then it'll give you the resistance. So this last screen shows you a graphing function of the current and voltage. And you can also select the update frequency. If you just hold in the OK, it'll change it. And then it goes back. And then if you hold the M down, Pretty sure this shows you how clean the signal, the power is coming into the unit. And if we go ahead and plug this in here. And you saw a little spike. That's when the uh, buds were actually starting to charge. So I'll push this again. There you go. And you can slow it down. Then you press the M button one more time and it turns the unit off. So uh, that's pretty much it for the WebU2 current and voltage USB meter. It's a really good tool. It's got a lot, a ton of great information uh, that you can use to measure you know, from USBs. You can also put in, you know, attachments on here to where it'll give you some bare wires and you can uh, plug them into other things, such as like a battery charger um, and stuff like that. And also this meter can handle up to uh, four to 24 volts DC um, and zero to five amps. So that should be plenty for any USB things that you're going to be measuring. So I will be putting a link in the description below in case you guys want to check this out yourself. It's uh, definitely one of the coolest voltmeters I've ever seen. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little notification bell to let you know when I put out new videos. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Later.